Hey everyone, I've been really busy, so I'm sorry I haven't been able to post much this month. Um, I've been really busy with CDL school mostly, and then I work on the weekends, so I'm just booked like seven days a week. I've tried several times to actually film a video in my tiny house and kind of show you how things are going in there. Um, things are actually going okay in my tiny house. Honestly, I am kind of done with it. Um, part of it's just because of school, uh, but there's other issues as well, and I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. But first I want to talk about how school's going. Uh, so I finally got all my hours in, I think it was uh, beginning of this last week. So I did all my driving, all my backing, and classroom hours, everything that I needed to get done. So the school is done, basically. Um, I took the state test, uh, so the actual practical test for the state. So I easily passed the pre-trip inspection. Um, that wasn't an issue for me. It gives people, a lot of people, a lot of problems, especially with Washington State's kind of lengthy one. Um, it's complicated and you have to be very precise, but memory exercises are kind of my thing. Uh, so that wasn't a big deal. And then, uh, I had the backing test. Uh, so the backing test actually went really well. I had to drive a truck that I wasn't really used to. Uh, the usual truck that we do most of our training on broke down, and so I had to drive another truck that has a horrible turning radius, uh, but I did get some chance to practice in it at the school's parking lot, and did the backing there, and I kind of got it down okay, and then when I went to actually take the test, the space at the test site was a lot bigger. Several other students that had taken the test had mentioned that to me before, is that uh, they thought that the actual test site was a lot bigger than the parking lot at school where we practiced backing, and I found that to be very true. Uh, that particular truck has a horrible turning radius, and I really struggled in the school parking lot, but um, at the test site it was no big deal. I got the truck right into the spots it needed to be, um, did the straight back just fine, so we were all good there. And then I tried to take the truck out on the road test to uh, do the driving part of the state test and uh, immediately got an automatic fail uh, getting out of the parking lot. Um, and it wasn't really so much to do with me. Um, it was a little bit to do with me. It's just I did, wasn't quite used to the truck's turning radius and, and the exit to the parking lot at the test site is extremely tight. The gate is very narrow there and the gates are like right on the edge of the road and on the and it's a narrow road and on the other side of the narrow road is a ditch and so uh, I tried to turn out of the test site parking lot and uh, one thing you're not allowed to do on the test is back up on the road uh, you can back up in the parking lot that's fine but you can't back up on the road and um, I didn't quite thread that needle perfectly and with that truck you really have to be you really have to know the turning radius of that truck and know exactly when to turn and I just didn't know the truck well enough and I guessed just a little bit off and I uh, ended up having to back up a little bit on the road to uh, get out of that situation and so automatic fail. <laughs> uh, that's okay, um, almost everyone fails their first time. Uh, it's just the way, it's just the nature of the test. There's so many ways to automatically fail and uh, just the nature of the roads and the strictness of the Washington State test in particular. It just means that I have to go and do the road test again. I don't have to pay any extra fees uh, because it's expected that you fail once. So <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so I actually will do that in a few days. I'll get back out on the road and complete my road test. So I'm actually kind of excited to do that and get that over with. The other good news about uh, truck driving school is that I've been in contact with a couple of companies. I think I know who I want to work for and uh, basically they said to contact them once I had that CDL in hand because I can't really apply for anything until I have both the CDL and my CDL is in all the databases, the federal and state databases, so they can do the proper background checks on my driving, which hopefully by the time I get this, I won't have anything on my record. Uh, it should be a clean and very empty record. So that's kind of a hold up there, and I have an appointment actually that I have to be at here in the Seattle area at the beginning of March, and so uh, it's probably going to be another month uh, before I actually start a new job and it's actually all kind of working out so uh, this delay with the school and getting my hours in and all that stuff um, it was annoying at the time but ultimately it's actually kind of worked out uh, because uh, by the time I get my CDL 
actually pass the test, uh, get into the Department of Licensing to get the physical CDL, get into all the databases and everything, uh, get a new job, get onboarded, and all that good stuff. It's going to be after this appointment anyways, so it all just kind of worked out fine, I guess. So I just also wanted to talk a little bit about kind of how I feel about doing this now that I've uh, been through this whole process of truck driving school and I know a lot better about how these companies hire and everything and whether I think it's been worth it so far. And I, I wish I could say 100% yes. I, I think it ultimately will be worth it, but I have to talk about how much it actually cost me to do this truck driving school and what I would have done differently. So, uh, the truck driving school that I had originally applied for months ago, um, that closed down, uh, they charged, uh, I think it was 4500 it was somewhere between 45 4600 something like that, and that covered everything, all my expenses, uh, and that would have been perfect. I didn't know at the time that my address was going to be an issue, and that that was going to end up costing me a lot of money uh, to deal with, but whatever. Uh, I ended up... Uh, after that school closed down, I ended up having to apply to a different school, the school that I actually went to, and uh, that cost me $3,500, but it didn't include everything. Uh, by the time you take into account all the testing fees, uh, the drug test fees, uh, because you have to go through their own drug testing system, uh, it's just the nature of being a driver, any type of commercial driver, I have to do this at work as well, get drug tested periodically. Um, just the way it goes, and then you had, then I had to deal with license fees, the applications for, uh, I had to pay for the Department of Licensing tests, uh, the written tests that I had to take earlier, and so all those fees add up, uh, and it ended up being basically the same price as the last school that I went to. And I did get my money back from the last school after they closed, uh, fortunately, and uh, so basically that just went straight into the new school, and then I ended up having to disperse it to all these various tests test people and you know all that good stuff so it all worked out in the end and it all ended up being almost exactly the same amount so I spent about 45 to 46 hundred dollars on the school and its associated fees itself but now I do have to talk about um, the tiny house a little bit and my address issues so I did resolve my address issues by basically just renting a tiny house and that has worked out perfectly as far as the address issues are concerned I did end up having to uh, pay the Department of Licensing some document fees, some license reinstatement fees, even though my license was never actually cancelled. So by the time I got all those fees sorted out, um, that was probably about $50 or so to get my license and address situation sorted out. Um, of course, my address itself has cost me money, and lots of it. So I can't complain too much because my living situation is probably one of the least expensive um, anywhere in the state, <laughs> honestly. Uh, you might be able to find some place like a cabin out in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere or something that's cheaper for rent, but um, it's not likely. Uh, so I'm paying 700 a month for my tiny house, which is, in my opinion, it's below market. Uh, the reason why it's probably so cheap is because the tiny house doesn't have a bathroom. Uh, he's also selling the tiny house. It's actually up for sale right now. He's asking about $28,500 and this tiny house is on the small side. I think he probably has it priced about right. It's not something that I'm interested in buying. And we'll get to that in a little bit as well. I'll talk a little bit more about the tiny house later. But um, I agreed to rent it for three months. Sounds like I can extend it out until May and then he's actually selling the entire property including the house that he's, he's living in uh, where my tiny house is located. So for those three months uh, that I know I will have to rent the tiny house, um, that's cost me $2,100. And so that ended up being a lot more than I expected. Uh, and so this whole adventure, the actual out-of-pocket costs, and I didn't take on any debt to do this. This is all stuff that I had saved up, and I was able to pay, just pay my way as I went along here. Um, it cost me uh, about $6,600, I think, once you add up everything, um, every expense that I had. So that's not cheap. So I'm hoping the CDL is going to be worth it. So I want to talk about one other thing that is going to be a little bit important to this discussion, and that is the amount of money that I lost in lost wages. I wouldn't normally kind of consider this uh, as money that I lost, because obviously I didn't actually earn the money. I don't generally count opportunity costs as an actual cost, but it is something that uh, I think it's important to consider and to kind of think about if I was going to do things differently. And so I w went back to about half time, and if I had been working full time, I would have made uh, about double what I actually made. And 
at my current pay rate, I lost probably right around uh, $2,000. And so if you take that into account, uh, I did not earn $2,000 compared to other months where I worked full time. If I had worked overtime, uh, that number would be higher. It would be a little bit over $2,000. So when you start thinking about everything, uh, all the money that I spent to make the CDL happen and all the money that I could have earned otherwise to you know pay off debt, I'm looking at somewhere in the eight to $9,000 range uh, that I could have spent on paying off debt. And I could have paid off a lot of debt with that money. I could basically have paid off one entire loan and saved myself somewhere between $50 and $60 a month. And there's a second loan that I have which I could have made a pretty significant dent into. And honestly, by the time this whole thing goes over and I get this new job, uh, if I had just stayed working full time, I could have all my debt paid off except for what's left on my car. Um, I could have done that in... I don't know, three or four months, something like that, <laughs> beyond uh, beyond February. Uh, so, you know, by summer, I could have been mostly debt-free. <sighs> so, that is kind of sad to think about. However, uh, there are some good things that are going to come out of this. So, first off, uh, one of the big problems that I've had with my current job is that basically I'm trapped in a high-cost-of-living area if I stay at this job, and I can't relocate without tanking my income, basically. So, uh, is the CDL going to make a difference for that? I think the answer is yes. Uh, the next thing that I have to consider is every company I've contacted with has tuition reimbursement, and they pay it out usually over about a year, more or less, and it's all the costs associated with the tuition, and so that's about $4,500 for me. And uh, so, over the next year of working a new job, I should recover a lot of that money and I should be able to get that debt knocked out pretty quickly. Another thing to consider is um, even though my pay won't be much higher than it is right now starting out, uh, within six months my pay will be significantly higher than what I'm making right now. That's another thing to consider. So I still think uh, doing the CDL is worth it. It just ended up costing me a whole lot more than I had originally planned. It ended up being a lot more time consuming, a lot more uh, difficult, and it's just kind of the way things work out. I always expect there to be a little bit of extra expense anytime I try to do something, and I expect things to take longer than I had originally planned. Just the way things always go, but um, yeah, the timelines were a lot longer than I had really originally thought. So that's just life and uh, just kind of have to deal with the position I'm in now and not really worry about what I could have done differently. But for anyone else out there who is thinking about sim similar things, uh, just expect that, yes, you can go to CDL school and be done in three weeks and depending on your state, like three to five weeks, but also just plan that it's going to take longer than you had originally planned. And that's been my experience with it. Everyone has their own experiences, so um, take it for what it's worth. Let's talk about what's next for me. So this tiny house has actually taught me a lot. I've always been really interested and kind of fascinated with tiny houses. For me, the tiny house on wheels thing is kind of an interesting phenomenon. Uh, it feels like something that's very specific to uh, getting around zoning codes. Uh, I like being a minimalist. I like living in small spaces. Uh, that aspect of it doesn't bother me. In fact, the tiny house feels like an absolute mansion. And I love the insulation. I love that I can have a space heater that I only have to turn on like halfway, even on the coldest nights, and I'm well above room temperature. All that stuff is just amazing. I, I love that about it. But I had been considering, um, you know, buying a small house somewhere and uh, living in that and using it as home base. And after living in this tiny house, uh, I'm really struggling to want to do that anymore. I think having a home base, some sort of shop where I can work out of, having an actual physical address, that part I really like and I, I think it's important. But having an actual house and property, making large payments on it, having to maintain it constantly, it kind of forces me to have to go home constantly. Uh, Any time that I have free time, I feel obligated to go home. Things like my fuel expenses for my car uh, haven't changed at all. Uh, I've been having to commute both to work and school. I do spend the nights at work, but I still have to drive down there. When you actually add up all my fuel expenses and uh, look at the number of miles I drive, I'm using the same amount of fuel I 
and spending the same amount of money on fuel every month, about $250 a month, still just like it was before, except now I'm not going anywhere, and I'm not going on any adventures, and it doesn't feel very worth it. And so that's kind of been my issue with the tiny house. Um, I just don't feel like spending time at home most of the time, and I don't really want to spend time at home, but I end up spending time at home because I know it's going to cost me a lot of money to go anywhere else and do anything else, and um, I'm paying so much for this address and for that space that I end up feeling very obligated to go there after work. So that isn't to say there aren't some things that I have learned about living in the tiny house that I really wish I had. Uh, so one is the countertop space. Um, I love that. It's amazing for cooking. I've been making almost all my own food again. I've definitely lost some weight. I'm eating healthier. Living in my car, I end up uh, having to do cooking outside uh, most of the time because it's just not a good space to do cooking in. So it's not really great to do cooking outside uh, in the winter here. Uh, just because it's too cold, it's uh, too wet and rainy. And unless I have a very specific shelter and, and all the stars and planets are aligning and I have enough time, uh, I just don't get a lot of cooking in. And so um, I just end up having to buy food which isn't as healthy and it's a lot more expensive. So that aspect of living in the tiny house has been great. Um, and having that counter space to work with Having that little bit larger refrigerator, it's just an apartment sized fridge, but it is a little bit larger than the one in my car, and that makes keeping fresh food a lot easier. Um, at some point I'd love to increase the size of the fridge in my car, but again, I'm probably going to be living in a truck here pretty soon, so we'll see what happens. And the last thing that I really enjoy about the tiny house is having shelving for my clothes. And uh, there's so much storage space, I don't even know what to do with it in the tiny house. And this is a tiny house on the small side. Uh, I guess I've just gotten used to living in really small spaces, but um, it feels like an absolute mansion in there, even though I think it's only like 16 feet long on the floor. Uh, it's still so much storage space that's just completely empty. I, mean, I have no idea what I would ever put in most of that space. But the shelves for my clothes are super important to me. And uh, it makes finding clothing a lot easier. I don't uh, ever end up in the situation where I just kind of run out of time digging uh, through my car trying to find the clothes I need and just end up kind of wearing the same thing two days in a row. I, it's just one of those things that happens when you live in a car sometimes. And uh, as much as I try to keep the car organized, uh, just having a little bit more space and shelves to organize my clothes like that, uh, it's, it's great. Uh, so, really that's what I like about the tiny house, just insulation, a little bit more countertop space, and having some shelves. So finding a way to incorporate that into my future I think is going to be good. Uh, I, we do have sleeper cabs on the trucks that we've been training on at work, and so I know about the size of the space that I'll be working with once I actually start living in a truck full time, and it's not bad. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than the car, it's definitely not as big as the bus, but um, it's plenty of space for me, uh, there should be space to cook. Although I don't know exactly what the rules and regulations about that are. I know most trucks have microwaves, uh, but I don't know if I can use my stove, one of my stoves, in there or not. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to kind of see how that works out. I am really excited to uh, move on from my current job and get into a truck. Even though this did end up costing me way more money than and time than I had expected. And I probably wouldn't have done it again if I'd known that I was going to spend this amount of time and money on it. But this is the situation I'm in now, and I'm going to make the best of it. And so within the next month, I'll have a new job. I'll be oh, well on my way to paying off lots of debt. And uh, life should be pretty good after that, I think. Uh, there's a pretty clear path on how to get out of debt, how to keep traveling full-time, and, and all that good stuff. One thing that I do need to start thinking about a lot more is I don't think I probably want to drive a truck forever. Just even at my experiences and talking to a lot of the people that, that do drive over the road and have in the past, um, I feel like it's very money motivated for most of them, even though they do like driving the trucks and all that stuff. Um, they do it to just make as much money as possible. They put it in insane hours just to make money. And they, a lot of those people, uh, if they stick with it for very long, they do make a lot of money. Um, that seems to be their primary motivation. And for me, that is my motivation for the, like the next year, but it's very quickly going to not be my motivation anymore. Uh, I'm going to be more interested in exploring, going on adventures. I don't know how much I'll be able to back off on the hours working as the truck driver. Uh, I'm going to probably want some sort of exit strategy uh, out of that and into something new. And I am definitely rethinking my whole thought of buying a small house or a small piece of property to put like a tiny house on or something like that. 
Um, after my experience living in this tiny house, I don't know that I'm ready to uh, go back to that kind of lifestyle. I've forgotten just how energy intensive it is just to stay put, how much resources it takes to do that, and um, just how much I don't really like that kind of lifestyle. I, I like being more mobile. I like being able to go out and do things all the time. So I have to think a little bit more about what I want to do after truck driving school and, and all that stuff. But I have time. And I think that's the most important thing. So, thank you for watching. I should be posting more again soon. I'm going back to full-time working at my current job, which means more adventures on the weekends. I should have three-day weekends again very soon. I'll see you on the next video.